two seconds a break, I hear the shit playing on radio and people wheeling the thing and wheeling. Oh the thing. my god! So when they tell me they have me, they want me to go and perform. I say I'm not going on stage. I want to block my face because I don't want to miss communion. <laughs> <laughs> And boom, here we go. Here we go. That's the man himself. <laughs> my, bro <laughs> my brother. How are you, How my brother? You? <laughs> so, ladies and gentlemen, I think that this guy on your screen needs no introduction, but I'm still going to give him the, the proper due. Um, I was saying to myself, because I have my, my, my iPad of, of, of notes here to, that I've made sure to get into this here. Yeah. Um, I, I look at this guy as Big Brother Teddy. Um, and I was saying to myself today that I think to call him a soca artist is not doing justice to the amount of work that he does and the amount of work that he's accomplished. He is probably the most humble individual you ever come across. And since I met him back in 2014, and he told me his, his quest and his desire to be able to make music for the world, it is always happy. I'm always happy to see him every single year be able to do it on the levels that he does it from his concert Euphoria to all the other carnivals he visits here in TNT, of course, in the native land of St. Lucia. So, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Tedison John, good, good night, night, my brother. Good night, my brother. I appreciate the intro. I wanted to cry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, um, I first of all, I want to thank you for being with me tonight. Um, this is a, a project that we started a couple of weeks ago, and Everybody has been clamoring to listen to the different creatives that we've had because of the experiences that they've gone through. And when I designed yeah. the show, um, the first 10 people, you were actually on the list of the first 10 people I wanted to touch. I, I appreciate it. Because I believe that you have a very unique experience when it comes down to music. And one of the things I've started doing now is I actually just come up with a line to kind of describe how it is I look at some of these people. So this, this is my Tedison John line here, right? Yeah. Um, I don't think your success has been something fortuitous. I honestly believe, like many people, your early connections to having a spiritual upbringing have permeated every part of who you are from your music to your personality. Would you say that that is one of the best de descriptions of who Tedison John is? I, I think you have it unlocked. I think you have it unlocked. I want to, to big you up on this project as well. Um, and you one of those people that... that that go through and, and you really dig deep, you know, when you, 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 you know, getting to know somebody or, or looking to know, you know, sometimes you have reporters or you have people that interview you that, you yeah. know, the depth of, of certain things. So I really appreciate that. And thank you for giving me this platform. But I think um, what you said um, is basically in a nutshell of, of me and, and, you know, how I am and, and how I choose to be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I want to bring something to your attention, right? What does Whitney Houston, John Legend, Justin Timberlake, Aretha Franklin, and Tedison John have in common? Every everybody was probably raised in church. That oh, <laughs> that, that is not talking about. <laughs> we already we already born already. We already born already. That, yeah. that's, that's what I like. That's what I like. That's my brother. Yeah. That's my brother. Yes, yes. So. Church. So I want to I actually start the conversation because I believe that you, you, you need to know where it came from in order to know where you're going. Yeah. And it's always great to take a, a look at the history of individuals who have gotten into the industry. So mm -hmm. if you can briefly give everybody an idea of, well, how was your upbringing in terms of coming up in St. Lucia? And, and, and when is it that you decided that music was something that you really wanted to do? Um, okay, um... How long we have tonight to talk? We have a while. We, 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 we have, we have, we're here what? We, we initially have an hour. If we go in after the hour and you're willing to stay, we can stay. Because, <laughs> because there, are some, there are some females especially. And there's one person here, Teddy. Miss mm. Candace Julian. Uh -huh. right? she, she is totally in love with you. She is totally in love with your spirit. She's in love uh -huh. with your music. And I know for a fact that Candace is here. So she probably, she probably could sit down and, and hear you talk till tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, a right. little bit about me. Um, I was, I was raised in church. Um, um, I did stuff like um, from children choir to, or they call it junior choir, junior you know, choir, to senior choir. Um, I used to, to sometimes conduct 
choirs. They used to put me to conduct choirs in. in. Right. I didn't. I didn't know what I was doing then, but I was just right. making people. You know what I mean? That kind of stuff. And then I I moved on to um like the bigger choir when I got older, right. and then like doing quartets and different things. You know, right. um, in 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 church. And from there, um, music. I was basically raised in music, that kind of vibe. You know, I, I always wanted to be, you know, around that. And right. Then some of the guys in the church used to give me a little chance sometimes to to play drums. You know, before right. I used to, I used to probably knock a little drums in the evening. I wasn't able to do it in the main service. Right. But they, you know, they used to make me try something in the evening because right. Um, I used to practice on. You see the the tins of of needle. And, and and you know them kind of carnation team. Yeah. You know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I used to practice on that. So when right. when it um when it's empty, you know, um I used to take the curve of it and make like a little splash a little higher and put right. the stick behind the house. So I used to do that kind of so I always beaten that and then there was an old chair that my mother had that um full of dust. And every Saturday I had to beat it. So I used to take a piece of stick and play drums on it to take out the dust. <laughs> <laughs> right, yeah. right, right. Um, so I, I, music for me was, was around, around, you know, that mm. kind of vibe. Was around church growing up in, in choirs and singing solos and that kind of stuff. Yeah. And then um, I started, I had one brother that used to work on the cruise ship bass player that used to work on the cruise ship, Francis. Right. Um, and then I have another brother, Hervin, that used to actually um, play in the hotels. You know, that so, so your whole family was basically in music at this point in time? It, yeah, they, they were in music. None of us are, are trained. None of us were trained. Wow. But um, everybody played by air. You know, right. I remember there was one day that a drummer couldn't make a gig and my parents were sleeping and my brother come and get me and make me sneak out to go play in a gig at Sandals. In, yes, no, when it's, play, you know when it's play. serious, when it says you have to sneak out and go yeah, to yeah, play yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because <laughs> I them know about that, I know about that. Them is worldly things. So I have yeah, a, yeah, yeah. I play with a black shirt and a pyjama bottom <laughs> with my slippers, you know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so... Yeah. It was that, and, and from there, um, I I used to do, like, school choirs, you know? I used to sing, sing an assembly in schools, you know, do the the, the, the special if there's a, a school show, taking part in the school show. And everybody that knew me, everybody that went to the, the, the high school that I went to or the secondary school that I went to knew that I always used to get kicked out of class because I used to be beating drums on the desk and singing right. and, you know, that kind of stuff. So right. everybody pretty much knew that's something I, I would have probably done something with music. You know, just because of that's what I always I was I, I always had that that vibe for it. Yeah. Again it was it was never really taught, you know. Um we didn't go to music school. I don't know how to read music, but you know, we hear it off here and we feel it here. Do you, do you think that that is, that is probably a God-given talent? I mean, it might sound cliche to say that, mm -hmm. but at the same point in time, there are people who go to college and study music. Their parents mm -hmm. may send them to study music. Here, yeah. they're, here you are as an individual able to pick up sounds and sonic frequencies from all over the place and be able to create music um, that I would say sounds good and probably was sounding good all that time because as yeah. you rightfully said, people knew that this, is, this was probably something that you wanted to do from since yeah. the beginning. Yeah, yeah. It... it, it. It's definitely, I definitely thank, you know, God for that because I, I don't know the, the, the kind of thing sometimes I hear, you know, in my head, the kind of thing sometimes to, to create and right. these things just come. And if, if I hear, if I hear, I'll find it on a, on a, on a keyboard, you right. know, I would play bass. Um, drums is my first instrument. Um, if I wasn't a singer, I would be a full-time drummer. Um, right. Bass, I like to play bass. I, but I cannot play with all the fingers. I can play with one finger. But I used to do gigs in the hotels, playing right. at sandals, playing at different hotels and bands, playing bass. You right. know? And, and I, I would play a whole two-hour set. I don't know the song, but I would find it. Wow. And then I'm able to, you know, and then key, keyboards, I got another something that I can try or something. But my ear is pretty open up, you know, to 
to music, you yeah. know? Yeah. That guy yeah. You know, and this reminds me of one of my favorite movies, which is Drumline with Nick Cannon. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, be because here, why? For that entire mo uh, movie, even though coming on to the end of the day, he had to learn music for, I can't remember the name of the yes. doctor. Yes. The bottom line is that Nick Cannon was known for being able to come up with routines on the spot. On so the you spot. remember, you know, he's out there playing and the guy who was the head of the band at the point in time is playing and then Nick Cannon yep. comes and beats him in the, in the beat. And, yep. you know, I always think about it because one of the things that, that I'm trying to accomplish with the Creative Collective mm -hmm. is that I want young artists and entertainers to understand some of the work that goes into your, your craft, right? Yes. Yeah. Um, so you have yourself, one of the things I know about you is that you have self-taught to play um, drums, bass, um, keyboard as well yeah, too. Yeah. Um, do you think that by the fact that you've been able to learn all these instruments, that has proven to be an extreme advantage to you to the type of sound that you want to get out of music? One. And two, um, do you think that it's important for vocalists especially to mm -hmm. be able to understand how to play multiple instruments at the same point? I, I think vocal is supposed to be able to understand because in that way somebody just cannot give you anything and you take it you know and you don't know what to do with it or you don't know like right okay I'll, I'll tell you this right i i just started okay let me let me put this in a way let me let me i'll, I'll be very i'll be very open and 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 and, and candid um right in 2016 mm was the first time I really started to get involved in my productions and be and be confident in what I was able to do. Right. And what I'm able to, 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 to do. Because before of course you de I dealt with different producers, you know, uh, my right. first song was you know with 758 pen of studio 758 pen and ace gave me my first ever soca song you know song now in 2007 right um when i came off the cruise ships i stayed home and i they gave me that you understand and then the production houses just gave me music so i wasn't involved in what i wanted to you know yeah, yeah. Of feel. They get you somebody an uh, artist they just give you a song and they give it song and the instrumental and you interpret yeah, it anyway yeah. you need to interpret it yes. right, right. yeah um in in 2011 and 12 no 2012 is when i got introduced to precision production right. um with casey and stuff casey. And, yeah and sheriff and nikolai and everybody and you know so that was a different sound you know right. but um i the truth is everybody started to get to know me from when I basically started to get involved more in my sound, right. Right. my productions, you know, and working with close knit people. Right. You understand? Like my my um my, I have producers in my band also. Um um Peppy is one of them. My um my keyboard player, he did Ali with me. You right. understand? Um, and from there, everything else that we, everything else that I was involved in worked. Like I wanted to just do what I was feeling. Yeah. And that, that's what was happened. You, yeah. That's what happened. Ali, um, Vent was made on Uber Soka on my iPad. Really? In, in, yeah, Garage Band. And that's where I started to. All in Garage ideas, Band? Yeah. I started right, right. to bring all ideas. I started to, you know, executively produce a lot of the different songs. You know, Kite Sa. Um, with, with Creme de la Creme, I added my flavor on it. It was G6 production. And I right. just had my... I just basically wanted to be in a position where I'm a musician too. And I had to accept that. And I had to accept the fact that, okay, Teddy, you can... You can put some of you... You can really do what you have to, to do you know, to make these songs work. So the time I started to believe in myself more, you understand, and not be shy, you understand, is when I I I got to do stuff. When when people like for instance, um me when I met people like Kerwin Dubois, which was you know, which is um 
my I would say one of my my biggest influences. Yeah. And the reason why Cohen is not one that everything is handed to him. Correct. He's very particular on what he wants to do. Yes. So it's, it's not handed to him. So you don't have Cohen is not one that you have five thousand emails and choose a song and then you just go record. <laughs> no. Yeah. Cohen is the one that writes, he produces, he, he understands. So my first song with Cohen was a song called Magnetic. Right. I got to co-produce Magnetic with Cohen. Yeah. Then I got to co-produce Arrogant with Cohen. Oh, so you were, you were on the production and all that? Yeah, yeah. And then I produced, I got to produce, um, The Hairs Rhythm was my biggest one. With right. Seth Lan and, and, you know. Yeah, and yeah. I was like, if, if somebody like Cohen that don't really need anything from me because Cohen was already doing his thing. Right. And if he can tell me, Teddy, you know, there's something special about you. You got something that's different. You got something. So that give me a little boost. That give me a little thing to say, all right, Teddy, just believe in 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 in, in what you do. Your eh, the, the yeah. guys in the band give me a lot of jokes eh, because sometimes that is what my eh, I can, you know, they didn't tell me, you understand? But yeah. I just got to a point where I had to understand what i was doing so if i go in a studio everybody know what it is already no basically nobody can fool me and and make me hear something that is not right or tell me that making from the mixes from from anything from chords from mm. percussions from from anything yeah. you understand that 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 my ears is open very very clearly to everything so i believe that every single artist supposed to have that, you know, that level of awareness in, in the, where music is concerned, where you can hear a, a, a chord and say, all right, that don't work there, or you can arrange, you understand? So yeah. everything that I, I basically grew up on helped me in what I am doing right now. All but I, I, find, I find that so funny you say about confidence, because again... I like to give stories because, you know, that, that, helps, that helps everybody understand the context yeah. of things. I remember when I met you back in 2014, yeah. and that was at the Wave radio station, I believe it was. Um, and at the point in time, you know, you were just discussing everything. However, and to me, you seem like Mr. Confident at the point in time, well, right? Well, and well. It, and it just, it's, it's odd for me to hear, like, you know, you have all this musical knowledge that you built within yourself that you, we, we've already established as God-given talent. Yeah. Um, and now, as it is that you are actually now producing music or doing music, um, you have been getting music from people and now you want to be able to produce your own sound and you need to, mm -hmm. you need to have the confidence to go into it. What, what do you think was, the, was the, the changing point to make you find that confidence to say, you know what, I'm going to be able to do this X, Y, Z? Let me tell you why it was a confidence problem because I had some people around me that probably didn't used to give me the chance and used to probably make me feel that, you know, okay, that, that, you're the artist, you're the artist. Mm. So it's just that. Don't tell me nothing about production and no, you know, there's sometimes there are producers, that, there are producers that would not, you know, let me add something or if I hang something, if I, you understand? And yeah. I know it's not making no sense, right? So know it wrong. And the, so yeah. when you grow up, when, when you actually grow up with people that, that probably um, make you feel like your contribution or what you, you want to do or what you, you know, what you, what you hear and not making sense. So that sort of like dampens your spirit and you just basically like rock back. Yeah. And just chill out and just allow things and that kind of stuff. So I went through a period of, of time in my life like that which allowed me to just hold my corner when it yeah. came to that. And then I started to just take more. I, from Ale, I started to take, you know, more confidence. When I saw what was, 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 was happening, you know, when it, it started to change me, you know, yeah. a, little, a little bit. So yeah. I started to be more confident, more confident. And then when I started working with different people and just, you know, being, being the, 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 um, like it being the final product and he's saying, yeah, you know, that is it, it's ready to go. Yeah. yeah when, when, I, when, when I had the conversation with Kivo last week, I was mm -hmm. asking him, um, a lot of the videos that he posts on social media, mm -hmm. um, are those videos relatable to life experiences? 
Um, so I guess in the same way, is it that the inspiration that you get from music um, has come from life experiences? Is it, is, has it been primarily from life experience or is it still that, I still think that some people, sometimes people are storytellers. Yeah. Uh, you know, you need to tell a story in a particular way, but yeah. you know, I do believe that there's a particular level of authenticity that goes yeah. into the entertainer that can be able to take a life experience and make, make something out of it that everybody could relate to. Is that correct? I, I think if people can own the, um, own, I people, I think if somebody can own a song of yours as their personal story. Yeah. Yeah. That's what it is. Right. When 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 um I did Ali, I was not accustomed to the response. Right. Because Ali is my first inspirational song. Even though I even though for me I and and I'm I'm gonna drop name drop some songs here. So uh -huh. if any if anybody inside here don't know it, I would like you all to go and look up Stress Free, please, from Tennessee, oh. right? <laughs> so, for yes. everybody who joining us, make sure and look for Stress Free on YouTube, which, which to me is, is the song. I wasn't introduced to Teddy on, on Ali. I was introduced to Teddy on Stress Free when you used to go on stage and go, I'm stressed. <laughs> and they do the dance, everything. Because I would see you on stage and everybody in the crowd is doing the dance. Yes. For this. Yes. So, when people come the year after and say, Yo, we only hear about the song in Ali. Ali is like, Yeah, well, they don't know about Tennessee. Yes, yeah, well, 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 you're right. Huh? You're right. You're right. right. I think I would say I would say, Ali is the the, the song that basically busts and into yeah, the black. Any bus song. Yeah? That's right. right. But right. um, songs like Stress Free before, obviously it was that. But I was mainly I was mainly a bumper guy. I was every song was you know <laughs> bumper this, bumper that, wind up and. You know, big I bumper, find, fat bumper. I, I find that hard to believe it because I was because here you are. My, this is this is Tennyson John, um, the guy bringing ministry to people for all these years. And listen to since me. I know you, I know you as the positive guy. So it's kind of Brother, hard. <laughs> I was a bumper guy. Listen to me. <laughs> the, there's songs, there's songs that in in I have in my repertoire for years that I will never sing again, right. Mm. Because, because <laughs> yes, there's song that I will not sing again because it is is it was a certain time in my life where I really wanted to to find my like I just came out on the scene so I don't know what is what I don't right. know what is what I had right. songs like bumper shopping big fat bumper Victor bumper <laughs> to all kind of shit real I did. And I see so basically com coming down the road is my first love. That's well, com com yes, yes. <laughs> coming down the road, coming down the coming down the road is my first soca song ever, 2007. And when right. I came on the scene, 2007, everybody thought I was not Saint Lucian because it was the first time the singing, singing, real kind of vibe, you know, right. was coming in there. So um, when I came that year, 2007, the first time I came in, the first time I won Groovy Monarch. Right. Okay. And these guys, these guys fooled me, you understand, because they told me, I told them I didn't want to go sing because the people in the church would have bust my ass, you know, they would <laughs> me, my mother would have hold me and thing. So they told me, so Penn told me, Teddy, okay, Teddy, just do the first verse, just do the thing and, you know, we're not going to put it out, you understand? Right. And I said, okay, okay. Two shake and a break. I heard a shit playing on radio and people wheeling the thing and wheeling oh the thing. Oh, my God. So when they tell me they have me, they want me to go and perform, I say, I'm not going on stage. I want to block my face because I don't want to miss communion. <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 so here's the graduation, all right? So let, yeah. and this actually is a good segue to the next question I want to ask you. So, yeah. I, I, I want to shout out all the solutions that join us right now because seeing them saying bumper, yes, Teddy was the bumper man. They know. So, so they know. They, the they know. Any solution that I can tell you, they know. Right. So, so now making that transition from, as I say, ministry, because you're a ministry guy, right? What? And, you're, what? You're, and, and, and you're going into, to, 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 as you say, big bumper, small bumper, fast bumper, slow bumper, any bumper, solution bumper, whatever, right? Mm. Was there at any point in time a conflict for you because I, I know that experience as being a DJ. So I was given um Kivo the story that my mom was a very heavily spiritual person. I'm not gonna say she was religious, she was very spiritual. I remember the first time in my house practicing music around that point in time. She's in the living room and she here, Mr. Vega, she's a hoe. And she oh, just shit. 
she knocks on the door oh, and she awesome. says, here we're going on. I think that's enough for the day. <laughs> you understand? So, but for me, growing up in a spiritual household, there was some conflicts, especially when it came down to going to events and that kind of stuff. Was there any conflicts for you internally when it is that you started to perform soccer um, on a much more, um, I, I would say, if you, a, a much more regular level? Okay. I'll tell you what was the change for me to change my whole approach. Right. There was this kid that was walking in the mall with her friends. Right. Kid, like probably eight or nine years. Yeah. She said, are you, are you Ted Tennyson? I said, yes. She said, can I take a picture with you? So we took a picture of every, you know? Yeah. And he loved the kids. It's not a problem. Yeah. And then she said to me, can you make a song without mentioning Bumper? Hmm. So, if you want a kid to make you feel like shit, that's what happened. Wow. So, when, when the child told me that, everything that I was, or I thought I was, or I thought it came out there, it ripped that, and it made me understand that I am not doing music for myself alone. Yeah. I'm doing music for everyone. I'm doing music for the, their kids looking at me, and their kids that want to aspire to do what I am doing. Yeah. So I had to change because I couldn't I couldn't go back and do something like I had to. Yeah. And then when I went back to do it, this is when the world, everybody else, you know, got to know me. So that was my defining moment of change. Wow. Right there. So would you say then that again can I see an illusion saying the bumper the bumper time? They know. I said. They know. So would you then say that coming from what you did before going into, as I said, singing, and I mean, there's no problem about singing about bumper. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. some of our brethren's lyrical, this one, that one, doing it. So there's no problem. To, each, to each his own. To each his own. But yeah. I, I, my belief is that you are only as great as your most authentic self, right? Mm. Do you think then that, again, as you said, that, that, that little girl coming to take that photo and telling you what they told you, was that kind of like a shake-up for you to say, yo, you, you need now to find your authentic self of who you really are? I, I couldn't, I couldn't, okay. I couldn't, I couldn't lie and be something that I'm, I'm, I'm not. I couldn't act and be something that I'm, you know, not. Okay, for instance, everybody knew in the industry, okay, I don't drink, I don't smoke, you know. Everybody, there's not, now they're trying to get me to drink, you know, <laughs> but, but that ain't me. You know, right. that ain't me. So not because I'm in it right now to act like, you know, yeah. it's not me. So it what this what this made me do is remember where I came from. Yeah. Understand? Remember where I came from and always try my best to deliver a message, you know, that somebody can take home. You understand? I believe so I can be in different John, there's jump and wave, there's run there, there's mash up something, there's yeah. everything. But yeah. I believe also there's the other side of Soka where you can actually give a message because there's a lot that people go through that a rum song or a jump hair jump song is n not what would, would, would save them, yeah. you know? And I learned that from what people used to tell me when Ale came out. You understand right. what they were going through and people suicide watch. And okay, I don't know about these things. So when people telling me that, it made me more responsible. And I was like, Teddy, you really had to check. Yeah. You really had to understand what you do. You had to understand what you do affects people. Or people listen to you. Or people take. People want to take some encouragement from what you do. You understand? So you had to be very. You understand with it. And 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 being being that the world got to know me through an inspirational song, you know. Everybody ended up, you know, looking to me for that kind of vibe. Yeah, you, you understand? So, it's it's funny you raise that. Be, it's funny you raise that because um, I, you, you had tuned in shortly when I had the one on one with Second Star. Yeah, and um, I remember Second Star made a comment to me at the point in time, which turned out to be kind of controversial. Um, because I had a couple of friends of mine who messaged me about it after, and mm -hmm. essentially what he was saying, and I'm paraphrasing here, so if I get it wrong, please forgive me a little bit. But essentially, he was saying that. People sometimes look at artists and entertainers um, as like the best friend, 
Mm -hmm. And there is an anticipation that when an artist does something or sings a song that elicits a particular vibe, yeah. uh, that person always connected to you in a certain way. So yeah. like you're looking to this person, this entertainer, to kind of be able to guide you through different yeah. challenges that you might have. Yeah, and, was saying, he, and you were saying to himself that as much as he appreciates the love that he gets from people, at the same point in time, he believes that individuals have people to do that, right? Yeah, and he wasn't yeah. saying it in an offensive manner, but he was saying it in a, in a, in a regard that it's a lot of pressure to be able to have that kind of, that kind of uh, energy with him. Do yeah. you see that as a pressure, a responsibility, or something that is ingrained in who you are as an individual? I, I, I don't look at it as pressure. I, I, I look at it as anything that comes from your heart, you know, authentically, yeah. you understand, will touch. Yeah. So for me, I put out what feels good to yeah. me. Yeah. You understand? And what feels good to me, I hope and pray you know, touches people or people can find, you know, something in it. Because I, I don't think it's pressure. I just think if you know who you are as an artist yeah. and you understand your purpose and your calling and your vibe, right. you understand, you know what to give. Yeah. So for, for me, I just feel that um, it's not pressure. It's right. you being authentic to yourself and giving out something from here. I learned it. I, I started learning to trust that. You know, the messages that used to come out in the song, I used to take it for myself too. Right. It, it, it had to come from there. And if it comes from there, then people are going to feel it. Yeah. No matter what genre it is, people are going to feel it. Yeah. Do, do you think that that is something that, for want of a be better way of looking at it, it's kind of lacks in soak. And I say that because when I look at some of the other genres of music, dancehall, reggae, um, hip hop, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, you get varying topics from across the board. You understand? Yeah. You get mm -hmm. love, you get cheating, you get who have the WAP, uh, you, get, yeah. you get who have the gun, who have the this, yeah. who have the that, who have the other, right? But I've, I've always remembered um, being in studio once, I think it's what, with, I believe it's Bungie. Because when I was working at 96.1, and you were saying that really soca is happy music. That's what mm. Soca is mm. happy music. So I always give people the example that soca is like good sex in the sense mm. of, you know, it keeps happening, it keeps happening, but at some point in time, you know, you have a conversation. Yeah, you know? true, true. So my point is, is that that kind of puts soca in a predicament because mm. at the same point in time of always being happy music, yeah. um, it is felt by some that the topics um that 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 one can sing about is limited right now when it yeah. comes to, do yeah. you believe that is the case or do you believe that is something that has been improving with with the music during during this time i think it's been improving with the music you right. know um soca for me it is not uh before i started doing it and what i used to watch was a, uh, you know right a event and this and that i yeah. i just believe that the time came where it changed where a message right. in the music in, in the jumping and the waving you can get a message right you understand you can get a and that's just what it is i think it's changing right now where the topics are much more broader i just don't believe every year is the same thing i mean what you okay i what are you gonna sing about every every year is drinks yeah you know every year is is you know friends and them you know, every yeah. day is link up. You know, every day, every year is the same thing. I, I, I think you have to be able to evolve as an artist and 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 start to 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 dig deeper. Yeah. You know, and and talk about topics that people own. Talk about topics that people, you know, people feel. Yeah. yeah. Like reggae. Okay, for instance, you 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 have dancehall. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. You have dancehall. You have reggae, you have, you know, you have Bob Marley, you have Chronix, you have Luciano, you, yeah. understand? you have Morgan Heritage, you have Tyrus, you have different elements, you understand, of it. You ain't yeah. knocking each, you're not knocking any of the, the elements, I'm just saying there needs to be something that can be different, Correct. you know, Correct. about, that's all, but I think we, we, we get in there, you know, it, it has changed. Yeah, you know, with, with with positive music in there, and people people starting to probably embrace that a little bit more than you know 
they've been doing it before. Yeah, so, if you really think about it, like when you listen to Soka back in the mid 2000s and coming yeah. up, the sound has really changed a lot. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you do have a lot of jump wave, show, do me a favor. You say, yeah, more of that, which we love. Yeah. But at the same point in time, with people like yourself, um, voice um, artists now who have been actually taking the music um, in a particular way and putting messages in music, even with any jump and wave. That is what makes you guys niche and different. And that is also a point I want to raise for all creatives here who are listening. Is yeah. that at the end of the day, as much as you want to do what is the popular thing, as my boy Trevlin said last night, don't always go for, for what is considered the flavor of the day, but do something that is long-lasting and different from everybody else. Let me tell you, let me tell you, the, uh, back to basics, bigger, back better. Back to basics, oh, bigger, back to basics, man. Guys, guys. <laughs> okay, let me, let me tell you something, right? I... You see, if I have to follow trends, hmm. I'll give you an example. Let me give an example, right? When I was going to put out Vend, Pale, 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 yeah. I was scared to shit. You know why? <laughs> why? I'll tell you why. Around that time, people just started to get the, the split in the middle. Mm hmm. You understand? And the Denry segment really was eh? Right, yeah. And I sp I like, boy, but Teddy, should I? Boy, you know, I remember talking to Black. Right. I remember talking to Kess. Like, what should I? And Black told me, Teddy, the day you decide to change your story, you're done. The day you decide to change your story and your purpose, you're done. That's powerful. I dropped vent in the heat of all the noise, you know. Yeah. Then started to touch people's heart. Yeah. In the heat of all the noise, you know. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. The longevity of music is what I wanted. I didn't want the quick fix because if you if you follow a trend every week or every two days, they have a different trend there. Eh? Correct. You understand? Every two weeks they have a different you understand? Yeah. You check me every two weeks. They have a, they have a, they have a, they have a different trend. Yeah. If you have to, if you have to change every time, you know you lose yourself. So yeah. for me, that's what I wanted. Yeah. Big up all my Denry segment guys and they yeah, do I, amazing. They do I know the amazing. They I know do the my amazing. Friend. My yeah. friend, Dr. 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 Torres just said that she loved the Denry segment. Now we love the Denry segment. It's beautiful. Listen, yeah. I, did a, I did a Denry segment. I did a Denry segment this year, Creme de la Creme, but it was my style. It was my way of doing you, that, that, that is Denry segment. <laughs> you understand? That, it's I call because, it, that's PG Denry segment. That's, that, that, right. that, that's so not for a, me. So some me, jiggle and whatever. No, 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 no. That is right. So hear me. I wanted to sort of like put... A, a beautiful feel on it, a crossover feel. You understand that, A, you can also sing about something different on it yeah. apart from that. So I love that authentic, you understand? But yeah. I want to be able, I have some songs coming out, you'll hear them, but it, it, it have that, you know, authentic denry on it, but it has my kind of style on it. Yeah. And you, you, know you know the funny thing about it? So, and this might sound bad, and again, we love the Denry segment. So yeah. We're not putting any negativity on the Denry segment. Or no, the no, Denry no, no, my boy's working hard. Whatsoever. But it's almost like if the Denry guys are like, you know, those guys that you go into an event and they'll talk to you and to take thing, thing, and they'll have all the, 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 the rude, rude lyrics to tell you, whatever, whatnot. But Teddy's the gentleman now that will come up and, and give you the gentleman story. And you be like, you know, Teddy, t that guy tell us, he's such a gentleman. <laughs> 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 we go with the bumper thing, you know. So you realize it, 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 yeah. you're a gentleman. You're a gentleman. You're a gentleman. Yeah, but it's still like it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, but seriously. you're right. You're right. Yeah. You're right. You understand? So for me, for me, longevity. I I started wanting to do music that can surpass a carnival. Correct. Correct. I want my music when carnival finish. You understand? You can hear that anywhere and it can make you feel like that's the first time you're hearing it. Yeah. Because it, and, and none of the songs, check this out, eh? None of the songs that everybody knew me for got to, um, had anything to do with Carnival. Right. 
there were more life stories. No, and that, that, that is actually a very good point I want to raise as well, too, for, for, for creatives, is that a lot of times when you listen to Soka, it's based in the moment. Mm -hmm. And again, nothing is wrong with that. I think that it's important for us to have music that's basic moment. Bigger One music. second, I'm going to take a fist down. It's hot inside the head. <laughs> <laughs> so you see, you guys see where this going on here. I see DJ Adam comment, and I want to get to her comment. I definitely want to get to her comment, because Adam, Adam just said that what? Teddy St. John is the friend in the friend zone with all the sweet talk, which apparently is the case. What they say? DJ Adam just said you're the friend in the friend zone with all the sweet talk. So you are the friend, guy that friend in the are, friend zone. You are that's the person. Why. Teddy is the guy who all like if you have a girlfriend, the boyfriend is warning you about. You see that Tedison fella? I will just steal from him. Like, nah, Teddy's a nice guy. And when he come, he come and say, You are my girl. You understand? It's done there though. It's done. D U D. Done. <laughs> no, but on, on a real though, on, on a real, on a real, on yeah. a real. Um, as you were saying, really, actually, um, I think it's more important now, more than ever. It's, it's more important, especially where there has been, since Trinidad, no carnivals for 2020. And I foresee that even though festivals may return in 2020, want to be downscaled in, in, a, in a large way. But uh -huh. I do think that now, for soca to be considered music outside of the normal season, there needs to be songs that, us, uh, that, that artists perform that uh -huh. are not meant for just a seasonal look, correct? Let me tell you, I was having this conversation in private, Ryan. Ryan, pick up yourself. And he said, Teddy, I really want to know what would Soka sound like without the carnival and shows and different things. Now, this is where we as artists, right. the responsibility on, is on us to be able to give something, you understand, that is real. People going through a lot of shit. Yeah. People are going through real times. People are going through unprecedented times. People want to have fun. People want to do everything. So yeah. for us as artists, we have to know what is it that we really want to, you know, put yeah. out or what kind of music we want to, to put out. Yeah. You understand? You 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 are very right. And I, I, I challenge... I, I challenge myself every day to come up with different things and I challenge in all artists too. Let's, has I've been, been challenging for you to be able to be in a creative mindset with what seems to be such a, a trying 2020 with everything that's happened so far. I know a lot of people and, and some of them in the group tonight who have spoken to personally have gone through periods of this time where yeah. as a DJ, you're not feeling yeah. to play music again. As an entertainer or a writer, you're just not feeling to write. Has that been challenging for you at all at this point in time to be able to find yourself in that creative zone? When, when everything just started to happen, it let me tell you something. I was Mr. Positive, Mr. Positive, but I couldn't take it again because I was, I'm, I'm human at the end of the day. And yeah. I broke, you know, my whole, I, I went into a slight depression just watching because after we did Trinidad and we had an amazing season in Trinidad, Kessie, well, yeah. the Rocks, the whole band, we, we, we had shows, band shows, and everything just started to get cancelled. And, you know, and watching everything that you had, you know, and you trying to figure out, is there an end in sight? And it just, it was hard. And then I, I went through a period of real frustration, like, you know, like, tell you really what you're going to do, like a, a panic, because this is all I do. This is how I provide, you know, for my family. This is how we pay bills. This is how we do everything. And yeah. artists and... And, and DJs and the whole creative section, which, you know, and a, a lot of things still bother me, you know, up to a day because I feel like we are the last set of people that every, anybody's really going to check for and make sure that we're okay, you right. know, because they're so caught up on, on everything else. But yeah. um, I went to that period where it was, it was really, it was tough. It was tough, 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 tough. And COVID allowed me to start spending more time with myself. Right. Right? Start to, start to spend time with you. Start to see your, start like self, self-awareness, like you, internalization, like you, you yeah. like you put, like, okay. Like, you know, like you purge, like you take a purge. Yeah. You understand? And that's what COVID did for me 
Yeah. And then when I started to drop different things and I saw different things and I, I just, things just started to come out, um, my mind and my creative started to become a little bit better. All the songs I had for St. Lucia Carnival, I, the only song that I released at that time when it just ha happened, my first release was I Pray. Right, yeah. And, and that came basically in a time like, you know, in yeah. a time like this. That's what it, it came there. So um, it after COVID did all of that, I started to have new inspiration. Yeah. It, and I started to see things and, and, and start to come up with different ideas and, and, and just start to express it in music. You know, I, I had guys that I had to try to encourage, you know, as well. It, it's rough when you have a band and that's what they do. You yeah. know, and you understand that's what we do and how everything that we were working for for the years, you understand, it 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 is just we got to see that just fall. You know? Yeah. The, we we worked to get to that point for a while and we just saw everything taken away yeah. from it. You understand? So it was it was it was hard to get everybody together. Yeah. You know, and, and Cheer up their spirits, and when your writers are concerned, your produ your producers are concerned, yeah. your musicians are concerned, yeah. management is concerned. It was it was tough. Yeah, I, th I think that, that? that's a, that's an important point to raise, and here why I say that because I, having a conversation with Trevlin last night on my other podcast, on Groove Theory, mm -hmm. he was saying that there are a lot of entertainers, artists, and creatives out there right now. That mm -hmm. people will feel that everything is okay, especially when you post on Instagram. So you know, you post yeah. on Instagram, you're doing this, you're, 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 you're playing here, you're having fun there, wherever. But people don't really understand that, the, that the, 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 the mental health that you may have at that point in time may be under a lot of pressure from the challenges that you're facing right now. And yes. the truth of the fact is, is that people now have to understand, which is one of the reasons why we're doing this is that even somebody like Tedison John, who people might see as the most positive individual, who have the most positive songs, who went yep. from the, the bumper man to the positive man, who can yep. give all that energy and vibes, he of himself still had a point during this entire point in time when yep. he felt the weight of everything on his shoulders and that affected yep. his creative process. Yep, it did. It did. And, and it, it's, it's, you cannot... And the truth is that everybody deals with that in a different way. So yeah. I cannot even give somebody pressure. I can't give a writer pressure. I can't give anybody pressure because they did it that in a different way. People yeah. got their rent. People got their rent to make. You understand? People got their kids to send to school. This is all what we do. People yeah. got loans. People got you know everything. So this just shook and stopped the entire world. You understand? And it's just you understand? Yeah, yeah. I get that. Yeah. All right. So. What happened is that I have three minutes before I know IG is going to cut me off, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have two questions that I want to ask you before the night is out. Yes. One of them has to do with um, soca being considered or people posting soca as reggae or, yeah. or otherwise on, on different streaming sites. I want to ask your opinion on that. And I also want to ask, do you think that as a soca artist, um, you can retire successfully on soca? And that is based off of a lot of the issues that have been coming up recently, especially with artists and entertainers who have been asking for help pledges, which I personally don't have any problem with, but just been gauging social media and what people have been posting, I understand that. So are you, Tedison John, willing to give us 20 more minutes? Are you willing to give of us 20 Of course, of course. I am not sure to go and do. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed today on um, Team Soka's Instagram yes. that there is now a Soka recognition petition, right? Okay. Which I saw your picture as well. Unless yeah. it is, you don't know about that, but... No, I know, I know, I know. <laughs> right. I know. So I saw your pictures with some other artists, Lyrical, Marshall, Nessa Preppy, etc., etc. They were Their photos were used with any promotion. And it basically is to lobby for soccer to be put as an official genre okay. on different streaming platforms, right? That's yes. correct, right? That's correct. Yes. Um, yes. So last year, um, Luke TT had carried an article um, in January 2009, which I'll probably post after which was talking about soca being labeled as reggae or world music by artists. Even yeah. artists who are saying soca was posting it as reggae or world music. Yeah. The argument was that when it comes down to the monetary aspect for people searching for it, um, yes. they are faster, they will be faster, they will get faster traction by searching for it as reggae 
or as mm -hmm. world music world will show up in those categories yeah. faster than soca on an international level but yeah. at the same point in time the catch 22 as they say is that if it is that we are now labeling our music as something else it does not do enough now to boost the music and the culture in total what okay. is your take on that in terms of do you think um monetarily we can be able to create a category for soca and still make the kind of finances that we want to from these streaming platforms given the competition that exists in music internationally in total okay um th this is such a, a a deep topic that i want to take my time to explain what, sure, no what I, I want to say what i want to say right so, <laughs> so, so i'm gonna say it right after yes. because I think so, I, yeah, yeah. So listen up, right? Listen up. Number one, we have to change our mindsets when it comes to soca music. Right. Right? Hip-hop got it. Reggae got it. Latin got it. Everybody else got it except soca. Right. In terms of how we do things. The reason why soca is not a genre is because we don't move units in terms of sales we right. don't buy we don't we we don't buy soca music right you understand we we, we don't buy soca we 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 quicker download of a of a julian promos or of a, you know lee or or just you understand we get it it's it's readily available for for, for every we, we don't really buy it to see right you understand so the only way we can change that is if we learn to support that aspect of it in terms right. of, you know, that online vibe of it. Now, hear what COVID did. COVID forced us to make sure we check these things because yeah. before we were so much in from show to show, doing your thing, doing everything, flying here, flying there, show shows, but you're not really checking the back end business where proper distribution is concerned. Right. You understand that that is the reason why it, it's not a genre because there is there is not enough support. You understand? Somebody said we buy the experience. We buy the the expertise. They're very right. We would go to soca events, parties, carnivals, this and that. That's what yeah. we pay into. But realizing that, for instance, I was talking to who I was talking to Kerwin, and I was telling Kerwin, okay, listen to me. Right now, with everything happening, everything is online. If you yeah. have ten, if you have ten followers on Instagram, and you put out a body of work, or you put out a song, or you put out something, these right. ten people supposed to be able to support you. You understand because these are your fans, these are your followers. They they supposed to be able to support that. Right. We as artists were never being we, we never really used to pay attention to that side of the business. Right. You understand? Because we were caught up in the we caught up in what we were accustomed of doing, the tours, the live shows, this and that you go. So you were worrying about streaming money, you were worrying about somebody going and you understand? And and that is the reason why we're in this position is because our entire mindsets, you know, have to change when it when it comes to that and i yeah. believe if everybody sings the same song if everybody is giving the same message you understand uh, the, the fans will get it and the fans will understand you buy yeah. a song for 99 cents or you buy an album for nine dollars right. you understand that is less than listen to me that's less than a haircut yeah you and you understand so imagine imagine 20 people buy an album you understand at nine ninety nine to support yeah. that artist that they, you know, they yeah. with or they or they vibing with. What you think yeah. it is? What you think is going to happen? I want to actually, I actually want to pose that question as I say to everybody who's joining us in the, in the chat tonight. So, 
would you or do you can, have first of all if, if you have if you've purchased soca and would you be willing to purchase soca as 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 how you would purchase a normal truck as i say online for 990 for, for how much of it is i see in one person here is saying and let me see if i could get any comments because as we said instagram has changed the way it is um live performance has always been the main income stream um even as digitization expanded opportunities for other revenue streams as well um, she, she's right Right. But but what happened right now, what happened right now, we, we're in a space where we are forced, you know, to basically yeah. check on our business. Right. Check on all aspects of it because there's not live performances anymore. She's very right. Yeah. You understand? That is something that we never really take. Come on, you, you, you do it for the season for Trinidad, you do the season and then you book for an uh, entire year. So you right. open from show to show plane to plane you ain't worried about you know spotify and and itunes and you know apple music and seeing what is what i right. i believe for me i'll tell you where my mindset is i believe in in putting out bodies of work right bodies of work so that's what i've been working on you right. understand compared to once you know a single you know a, a, a song you put out a thing on a rhythm or this and that i believe people people will more support bodies, you right. know, of work. Somebody say, <laughs> I'm real afraid to get a credit card card, buy too much soca. Buy it, my girl. <laughs> because, yes, yeah. but go ahead, and, go ahead and buy it. But the truth is that this is what we need more of right now. But do you think, do you think that, I mean, to some extent, the artists themselves are to blame a little bit. And I say yeah. that only because at the end of the day, music unfortunately many times it's produced just for the season yes i had already produced with a holistic plan in mind you know and i always remember having this conversation with um a producer from st vincent i don't want to call his name because i don't want him to get in trouble yeah and he was saying to me that um artists from st vincent they have a particular sound a particular vibe with music yeah. but because they don't look at the end game or they don't look at the long run when it comes down to music a lot of times it stays very local uh -huh. and it doesn't go out to the international realms unless yeah. well, somebody like myself or back to basics or another yes. dj yes. take this yes. song and puts authority on it do you think yes. that the artist may at times be somewhat to blame for that i i think so we have our fair share right. we have our fair share of doing it where we 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 create such a seasonal you know a seasonal product i think we we have ourselves to blame for it as well you understand it's not really blaming anybody but we have our big share to do with that i i went through that situation or that that kind of phase in my life where i had to go through that to make my mindset change as to what kind of music that i want to put out though yeah. you understand i want more you know music with longevity i don't want it to be seasonal it that, that's why i didn't want to talk about carnival in in the songs because you don't want to make it you know a, a, a carnival song a carnival song correct. you understand i think if we have more seasonal mu um not no more music which is you know out of season music that can play year round then everybody's mentality you know will change their radio stations or their places when uh, when carnival finish the whole thing change you yeah well it's, it's, like, it's like a trailer where we used to call it soca switch so but then not, from, it, it, from but boxing day listen to me i have a problem with, it's soca and then after that from 12 o'clock i have Wednesday. a problem with what you call a soca switch a i have soca a problem switch. with that they're not supposed yeah. to have no soca switch from an island you understand which is the main place soca music is is is, is birth you can have a yeah. soca switch yeah nah soca supposed to be playing year round yeah and that's what would happen why do you ever have a, a, a reggae switch in jamaica <laughs> yeah, huh? yeah 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 okay yeah yeah, yeah. all right I I agree. I just saw a comment here. I want to get to that quickly. Um, this is from Amelisic. Um, I think it says, I think the streaming companies were always making the money because people were always downloading music. However, the artists are now becoming hip to the game. I think basically what she's trying to get to the fact that, you know, artists now are now realizing that these streaming services are to be used as a monetary way to build yes, for yes, what they've been. Yes, and yes. with would you consider that now the main reason, and I want to look at it from the tail end and from, from the front, 
-hmm. Is that the main reason right now that there is a petition to have soca music categorized on streaming platforms? But on the flip side of that, it's all about the dollars and it's all about the money. Is I, it I, that we are getting, I, we are mm -hmm. not getting that traction because some of these companies are not seeing the kind of monetary value for them, and I mean for them alone, that comes with soca music? I think it's, it's a bit of both. Um, it's a conversation that was always there. It always used to happen. But the truth is we were never really forced into this position as to what COVID did. Right. You understand? COVID making us check all these things. If we touring around and doing making money everywhere, the truth is we're not really going to check that. But yeah. COVID really forced us to. So the conversation was always there. Yeah. You understand? And the, the, the reason why the agencies is that we're not moving as a Caribbean or a Soka fraternity. We're not moving numbers in terms of, you know, buying. Right. You understand? You, 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 you'd you see Chronix, you know. The reason why Chronix, they're not just so numbers, reggae, they check in charts. They check in charts. Ziggy yeah. Mali, Morgan, they check in they check in charts and if you check if you look at the jamaicans that's why a lot of them more in structure in terms of you know how they go right. about before so, okay before a song even okay with soca right a lot of us before before we even put out as we basically put out a song just put out a song right there's no there's no the song is not coded the right. song is not even if somebody I've been I have been in that situation where people ask me, but Teddy, I looking for the song and I can't get the song. Right. You understand? So if I look into purchase the song and I can't get the song. So I messed up on that shit too. Right. You understand? So a lot of us been in these situations where we we've been doing things wrong for so long that it has been embedded in us. Yeah. You understand? And by extension, our fans and our supporters. Because if we, uh, listen to me, I've had people fall in my skin and tell me, Tedison, I cannot get this song online. Yeah. That's why right now I am making sure, you know, anything that I put out next, you understand? It's, it's going to be there for purchase. It's going to be there for people to find. Yeah. You understand? I'm learning so much. All songs need to be coded. Yeah. Correct. You understand? It's called an I, a IRC or something. Yeah. I R S E a, a code the, 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 to find the song. Yeah. You understand? A lot of us, our music just up in the air, and we probably have money just up in the air there with no owner. We just but put I, it up, and there's I no think, owner. I I think one of the reasons for that, and this is a something I I, I kind of told second star in our earlier conversation the podcast, mm -hmm. um, is that for many years. Soka was kind of seen as the outside child of entertainment, right? Mm. And I'll tell you why I say that. Reggae and dancehall are not just, it's not just about music, it's a culture that goes okay. with that, right? It's a culture that goes with that. And it's only in the last couple of years where now we have been seeing a, 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 a mass movement of Caribbean people to all the different festivals around the world. Mm. Um, there are now Soka festivals being held in different cities in the US. Obviously, Uber Soka Cruise and all these music. Yeah happening during the year yeah. that now instead of soca being isolated to this one island here and st vincent have their little thing there and barbados have their little thing there um as i said before as you rightfully say when carnival done nobody talking about soca mm -hmm. right um now it has become from being the outside child to to to, to your wife you understand mm -hmm. because now yeah. this is soca is big Right? Yes. I go and hashtag that. I go and anybody take that that saying and put it on a jersey. Just remember, so that, yeah, you, you Soka right. is big, right? Yeah. And because Soka has become that now, now we have to look and re-engineer what we were doing before yes. to kind of get to the business sense of where we have to go to next. My brother, you are so right. I cannot take. I cannot fight anything you said. You are so right. On on our ends, we've never really as artists. Not everybody has done it. You yeah. understand? There are a lot of people probably do it quietly and just do their own thing. But we've not really done it as a as a body, you know, as a soca, you know, fraternity together. We we haven't really done that, you know. I think it's right now we really get into to organize and see and try to fix it. But right. it's just a way that we've been thinking for for so long. Yeah. 
Yeah. You understand? I believe it can change. I believe if everybody sings the same song and if everybody tells, you know, if, if everybody let the entire fraternity know or Soka or Caribbean Soka fraternity know, they will support. Yeah. They will support. But it's just, it's, it's on us. It's on yeah. us to make yeah. sure we get our stuff right. And, 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 and that actually takes me to, to, to probably, the, well, the last major question I wanted to ask for the night before I get to what everybody asked here. And this was yeah. something, that, this has been in my mind for weeks now, right? Um, as you and many people here who might be watching know, um, recently Blacks um, was having um, some health issues. He's still having health issues. My brother. Uh, right? And there are mel there are mel there's a call across the Soka fraternity to help him. Now, I, I want to say this from the beginning. I do believe that is is important for us to support um, our artists, our entertainers, because they are ambassadors for our countries and for the art. So I do believe that. But at the same point in time, I've been hearing and seeing on social media the argument being made by some that artists and entertainers who are very successful and I hate using the 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 terminology that people say on, on social media, but I'll just say it for the purpose of the conversation. You know, well, mm -hmm. Carnival come and you do all these shows and you do this and that and you've made all this money. Mm -hmm. And now you're going into a point in time where it is that you are seeking to get funding for, for, for certain things in your life. Um, the argument is made, well, what has happened to all the finances that you grew over that period of time, right? Mm -hmm. I had a real insightful conversation with a soca friend a soca artist friend of mine whose name i don't want to call again because the conversation was kind of private but what is your take on that in terms of people feeling that soca artists are making millions of dollars so Mary, I think, that you are supposed to be able to sustain yourself in any situation i, I think it's because of what you know we show them mm. you know i think it's because of what we show them i don't think a lot of people know on the other side you know of an artist's story they don't know an artist's true life we we i i think if we had to show every single fan everything that we go through in our process you'll understand and you'll get to appreciate it more with mm. the event of social media and everybody you know flashing this flashing that you're looking like everything you understand but sometimes you know things dread yeah you you you, you understand what i'm saying we, you, yeah. you, we as artists i guess don't want to show that aspect you know of it for instance i can tell you it, it in terms of of when people say okay all the money you make and and this and that you know how much a song costs correct for? <laughs> so, so so for you, the you, upcoming you, creative so for yeah. your upcoming creative what is the average cost of a of a well-produced thought out plan so brother listen to me they have writers probably two thousand us two thousand us for writing All right yeah you understand? Yeah. And then a production, you understand, is at 3500 <laughs> You yeah. understand? Yeah. It, it dreads. So it, it is a different thing that, okay, come on stage with one outfit, they'll tell you you only wear in one outfit uh, for the entire carnival. Oh, man. So you can't really please. So I, you have to, there are certain things that you have to, okay, your, your Instagram you know, just to set that up and make sure everything is running, your distribution, you know, paying for the songs to go out, artwork, you understand? It everything, it 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 costs money. Yeah. <laughs> it it does. Sometimes yeah. you try to make it back. Sometimes yeah. for a season, okay. There have been seasons where, okay, and you'd see an artists everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. But you don't know that artists doing performances for free just yeah. to try, you know. To get to that level where people people see, yeah, yeah, you 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 understand. So sometimes what you see is not necessarily what you understand. It is all of us going through a rough a rough time. And something okay for 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 instance, right? You know how you know how the season is, yeah. okay? You everybody looking to get into the top you know the top 10 or the, the top, top 10 grade. yeah the top 10 songs or the top that's, 10 shows or whatever it is yeah that's yeah. right you're trying to get that so your yeah would be okay yeah so for the entire time in trinidad you probably going from 
you know, so to show, just more on a promotion basis and trying to push, yeah. you know, for people to see and people yeah. to say, okay, if you see me there, all right, we'll go there. If you, you understand? It, it's, it's a lot, of course, added to it. I don't think, you know, a lot of supporters know the other side of it, but again, it's what we show them, you know, you, we show the glamour side, we don't show the stress side. I well, just cry, my head has grown. Well, <laughs> well, remember, as I told you before, um, Soka was always seen as the outside child or the outside yeah. woman. And yeah. I remember a couple of years ago uh, meeting Peter Ram. This yeah. is a while, while ago. I, when I met Peter Ram at that point in time, I, I can't remember what was it. I think it's that when he had um, Pump in at the point. Yeah. In time. That was like his first real breakout song into Soka. So that and was the yeah, eight. Like uh, seven, was, eight or something. Yeah, like that. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember somebody telling me at the point in time that, yo, Peter Ram actually works in it. You understand? So there are multiple artists in different Caribbean islands and we might not know that in sure that there are artists I know, like Hans John from St. Vincent, who is yeah. Iranian um, groovy soca monarch, right? Yeah. Hans is an accountant. You understand? And he's an accountant. So at the end of the day, even though he wants to be able to produce and sing and do what he wants to do, he's juggled in his mind that cost-wise, he needs to keep his job to be able to do what he wants to do, but at the same point in time, he still wants to successfully put music out. So that's why, I, that's why I really wanted to find out from your perspective, do you really think that an artist could retire, our soca artist could retire from doing that music alone, or is it set up in other business ventures? I think it's set up in other business ventures. I think an artist is supposed to be able to, you know, invest in different ventures you yeah. know why are you doing his music i'm not you know like for me there's different ventures that i want to be able to invest in and and make that money you know roll or, or make something happen yeah you understand like okay for me i was doing soca music and i was still in the hotel i was an entertainment manager yeah you know at smugglers resorts right you understand so i used to go do shows Labor Day, go to New York and do my thing. When I come back, I go in straight to work. Right. To do a production. Right. Or to host a manager's cocktail party. But I don't believe... The reason why I changed it is because I believe I had to have both of my feet in. I had to give it my full attention. Right. You understand? For me, able to reap, you know, what is it that I really wanted to, to do. I, I didn't think that I could have knocked it off if I was doing another job and then doing this i think soca art is supposed to be able to to find different things to probably invest you know at yeah. the time that your money can work and your money can multiply and i actually want to go through some comments here i see in black aquarius was asking what i don't know if it's asking as a statement artists mm -hmm. don't have sponsors to market themselves and i think sponsorship is always iffy because mm -hmm. one year um, a company wants to give you how much ever thousands of dollars to do whatever and then mm -hmm. the next day company don't want to give it up you know we mm -hmm. I don't think we've built the capacity in the Caribbean as yet where you have the kind of lucrative contracts that you'd see like an NBA basketball player. Like yes, we don't. Who are signed for, for life with Nike. We don't, yeah, or we Or Drake, Drake with his over brand are probably had signed to somebody else. We don't have that capacity if, as yet. If, let's say, your song, okay, the most that can happen if the song hot, then you get a, a, a deal from Pizza Pizza, you understand? <laughs> right. To, you know, do a song or you get Carib to do... It's nothing to say it's a longevity, you know, kind of vibe where you can say, okay, that artist is that and you get this from that company. Companies know what they look for. I think if, if you know, we as artists, you know, work on, on our vibe and what we bring, you understand, then companies can look at us from that point of view in a long, you know, in yeah. a long way. Yeah, you have like different a companies, you have Flow, you have Digital that have the artists, you know, they do stuff. So I don't know the deals that they normally, you know, do but yeah. i think that we need to, to to give the company stuff also that they can say okay that is something that is, is lucrative and you can hold on to that person for yeah long yeah. term yeah black aquarius i, I just gave you your comment i actually appreciate your comment so thanks a lot for your comment i know you were just saying just saying uh miss j check i said but just as tennyson was talking about now building knowledge about digital income streams some soca artists still do not give consideration to financial investment and it's uh, it's importance um about fans um so i think that's also a, another big issue as well to the sense that artists now have to understand that probably to a high extent um 
money that you are getting, though I do admit that it needs to be reinvested back into your business, yeah. at this point in time, you need to also see where other investments can go to other True. areas. That, True. Are, um, as Kivo was saying last week, he wants to be able to be home and still make money. You understand? That, that, that if, is if what... he's home, he'll still be able to make money. And, and that, is, that is what I'm talking about in terms of investing. Yeah, yeah, so yeah, yeah. Hello? Yeah. That's what I'm talking yeah, I'm about in terms you're... of investing. In... That's what I'm talking about in terms of investing in other businesses where, you know, you would be able to be relaxed and watch your money work. Yeah. You know? Yeah. For you. Yeah. Um, I want to get to some questions here quickly before we wrap up for the night. Yeah. Um, which is let me get to this first one here. Uh, which is from Roots Gear. <laughs> yeah. Who is your favorite R&B artist and why? I, I, you don't necessarily have to sing a piece of the song. We, I mean, you don't necessarily have to sing piece. But who is your favorite R&B artist and, and why? Listen to me. I grew up on R. Kelly. R. Ke <laughs> I grew up on R. Kelly. Sorry. I don't give a shit what he do. Sorry. I apologize for what he do. But listen. <laughs> listen. Listen to me. I, 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 he did what he did. Right. You know he's paying for that. Right. Hey, but I I grew up on on Kelly, and the reason why I grew up on Kelly. Black is curious, still, like how much yeah, I know, right? I know. I know, right? Section. It's the truth. It's the truth. No, I, I'm talking. Listen to me. I'm talking early. I'm talking early. R. Kelly. I ain't talking. Yeah, that's you okay. Know. Post, post, post Alia R. Kelly. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> talking 12 play, talking you remind me of my Jeep, talking them things. <laughs> that guy talking there. So sorry. I just had to be honest. Yeah, sorry. That's not a problem. That's not a problem. That's not a problem. Yeah. Um, I seen somebody else asking here, um, do you have a wife? Oh, hmm. Lord. Shut up. What they want to know? <laughs> they want to know if you have a wife. Well, um... <laughs> um, 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 I've always been told when I, when I entertain, I start to go well. Um, <laughs> no, I don't want to. No, 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 no. I, 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 I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm, I'm not there. You know, I'm not there. I'm right. Not, all right. I'm not there. Yeah. All right. All right. All right. So I'm gonna get to the rapid fire questions quickly before we wrap up for your night. Um, the first one. Um, is there any hobby or activity that you picked up during the COVID pandemic? Something that you probably didn't do before? Cooking! So you weren't a cooking person before? Let me tell you something. I used to live on the road, so it's a lot of shit. <laughs> but I, I started... <laughs> so I started... I started um, cooking. Right. You know, I started cooking. And I started making more... And, and making my food compared to buying. Right. So that... You know, yeah, yeah. That that it's it's amazing things that you pick up at this time. Like I I picked up cycling, and that was just simply because I wanted to be able to keep fit, and all the gyms closed. So for me, I needed to get a form of cardio, and I always wanted to actually do cycling, but I just never had the time before to do it. Yeah. So now I would take my bike and probably run ride a couple of miles. Uh, big, big up DJ that. up to ride I with do, some crew on Wednesday. As well, I do that as well, and I bought a fishing rod. Right, 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 right. And these yeah. are things that obviously you would not have had the time to do before. No, no yeah. time. Yeah, I get that. Yeah. Um, uh, let me see. If you had to convince anyone to travel to St. Lucia at this time during COVID, bearing in mind you will need to quarantine and all that kind of stuff, what would be a sales pitch right now? St. Lucia is just a place of love. St. Lucia is a place where it's easy, it's calm, it's it's beautiful, tranquil, you understand? Just just I started learning how to appreciate the simple things like going to a little waterfall. Yeah. You understand? Going and take a little walk on a nature trail. Yeah. You know, going down, taking a boat out and going out on the water and just watching the blue water. You yeah. understand? That kind of vibe. Yeah. So if you just want to get away from all the, 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 the troubles, all the shit in the world right now, come to St. Lucia and yeah. just relax. Yeah, yeah. And, and the funny thing about it is that that old adage of saying that we work, we work where other people want a vacation is the, is the actual truth. And the truth, in fact, is, which is the last thing I want to get into for the night, is that I did see sometime last year that the St. Lucian government 
had sent some of their Denry artists um, yeah. a tour to promote the island yeah, um, yeah, yeah. As, 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 as soca tourism, yes, but also the fact that, you know, come to St. Lucia as an island. And yeah. I would say, that from me being to St. Lucia multiple times, you are right, like St. Lucia is one of the gems of the Caribbean that, as you're yeah. right, it, it's, it's an island full of love. People are full of love. love. Yeah. Go there and many yeah. times I, I will go to St. Lucia to reset. I mean, I'll go to St. Vincent to reset too, but St. Lucia's a different kind of reset. St. Lucia's yes, a different, the St. Lucia, when, when I'm done, sometimes when I'm done with touring or when I'm finished with a St. Lucia carnival, yeah. I, go down, I go down to Soufre just to reset. Yeah. And resetting is just waking up to a view of the pitons. Yeah, you yeah. know, you, you wake up to a view of of, of birds. You need like a, the sound of birds. That you know, it it real nice. I started spending more time, you know, with myself and my family. Right. You know, which right. I was never around for. You understand? My brothers and I, we got more closer together. Everybody got closer. And we started doing stuff as a family. Yeah. You know, my kids. It, it's just beautiful. You know. Yeah. But do, do you think, finally, that Carnival now has become... Because I believe that St. Lucia Carnival has become one of the top festivals in the region throughout the course yeah. of the year. You know, yeah. And um, I personally believe that that has been something that was on the horizon for a while. But in the last couple of years, especially with the videos that came out, uh, the Denry segment and the Boom Boom yeah. and yeah. all that, yeah. St. Lucia now has become a powerhouse in Carnival. I do, you think, think, I, do, you, do you think that enough is being done now to market that as a part of the tourism aspect of St. Lucia? I think our, our carnival, um, a, a lot of, we used to have two major festivals over here. We used to have jazz and we used to have carnival. Right. A lot, a lot went from, the, was taken from jazz and brought into carnival. Right. And um, there's a lot more that we can, you know, there's a lot more that we can do. I think that St. Lucia Carnival this year would have been, you know, the talked about carnival. It was. You understand, for the islands, just from the vibe of what, you know, from Trinidad coming home and, you know, everybody. I even moved, you know, we even moved our concert euphoria to carnival week. And right. we were going to do a carnival band that was already, you know, being sold out. You know, right. everybody just wanted to come and just vibe, yeah. you know. So I, I think... um. We are using what we can, you know, to, to, to be able to sell and market. There's a lot more that we can do, you understand? But we are doing what we are to do. But I, I do think, and I'm seeing the comments here in the chat about some people loving when it was, it was more low-key. <laughs> well, well I, I remember I, Patrick, you, you remember P Patrick, um, Patrick the hype, hype, the hype man. man, yeah. Patrick, I remember Patrick t telling me one day, Teddy, I, it's like, I, St. Lucia is such a gem that I don't want everybody to know. Same. Because, I, same, same, because, same. because people will just, you know, and, and, and the thing is that we so, we so much of an open heart kind of people that we accept anybody, you know, yeah. it, it doesn't matter. All our events, everybody, it's nothing, it's easy. Yeah. St. Lu Lucia is just easy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, after say on that note, um, you guys, as I said about solutions being very open, and again, as I said in the intro, um, from since meeting you in 2014, um, I still consider you Big Brother Teddy, even though thank you. you know, and, the, and the ironic thing is, we met on that one time, and I will tell anybody with all the success that Tennyson Jones had, he's never still forgotten that first time that we ended up meeting on that. No, 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 that video never. Session, right? He's never yeah. forgotten that. I think. You are an example of what St. Lucia represents in terms of that down to earth, that nature. Um, yeah. and, and you see, look, I want to make, make the point here. You see, Candice Julian, look, she said right in the, in the chat, Teddy, I love you. That oh, Candice, thank you. See, you. Candice has been here since he began, since before 8 o'clock, Candice waited for his conversation. Hey, Candice. <laughs> thank but you, Candice, I appreciate you. Nevertheless, Teddy, um, I really want to thank you for your time and your insight into the industry, into the music, into the pitfalls, the challenges that, that wanna, goes with it. I want to let everybody know that on November the 22nd, I want everybody's notification to be on. Right. Because this is going to be our first ever fully acoustic soca album. Wow. Okay. Which is going to be coming out on the 22nd of November, myself and my band, right. the TJ 
project we actually got to open up for Kess Tuesday in the Rocks. Want to big up my big brothers. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to do it. It was huge for us and yeah. it was huge for St. Lucia because it never been done. Yeah. To be in Trinidad and to do a 45 minute to 50 minute set right. in a stage to you understand? When we came back home, it, we had to do something amazing. And I want to, we nervous about it because it, it, for me, that's the, the most liberated I've ever been, you understand, in putting out music. Yeah. Because I, I, I felt like we just did us and his amazing musicians. Yeah. You know, my band, TJ Project, Casey, my bassman, Zach, my guitarist. Peppy, my keyboard player, Shaq, my drummer, Daniel, you know, my keyboard player, and, and he's the one responsible for all my vocal engineering as well. Right. You understand? So, 11 songs, a lot of them you may know, some you may not know. People may know me from, you know, before, those that didn't know me from before, Ali, you would get some, you know, there. Yeah. But what we love about it, it's totally live. No, no, um, Sampling, no nothing. It's totally live background vocals, female vocals, beautiful. It's yeah. called Caribbean Moscato. I just might lose my virginity to a glass of wine. You understand? Because. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you see why you see. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So it, it's called Caribbean Moscato because when you listen to it, it's, it embodies every single influence of what, you know, I've been through and, um, with my music. You understand? Yeah. And you just simply want to have a glass of wine. Yeah, yeah. You understand? So yeah. that's why it's called Caribbean Moscato. The first song is going to be released on Friday. When is it? Yeah, I did see that on your Instagram. On your Instagram, yes, correct. Yes, right. yes. And it, and it features one of St. Lucia's very best um, lyricists, rapper K.O. And he's right. actually, he lives in Toronto as well. Um, so it's going to be out on Friday. Um, but we can't wait to share it with you. You know, I, am, I ain't going to lie. I'm nervous because you know of what it is. And it's going to be on every single digital platform which is the you most understand? important which yeah. is important so we want everybody to go out and support if you support what i've been doing if you've been rocking with me if you've been rocking with me way before ali and you just got to know me you understand make sure you turn off turn on your 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 instagram notifications from now because we're going to be dropping different things until the big day november the 22nd it's also um the feast of musicians in saint lucia Right. You understand? Musicians birthday in St. Lucia. So normally musicians buy bars and different things and we just jam in and all that kind of stuff. But yeah. make sure you support it. I am looking for you to support it. I'm looking for you to to you know show me some love and just let me know what you, you let me know what you feel. And I'll I'll endorse Nariba from Zale, that's my team here in Trinidad, who said let's uh, let's buy the album and, and support the artist. And I, I endorse Thank you. you for Thank you. Endorse. We, so we, we're not we want we want you to buy it. it, it listen to me, it, the album is going to cost more than you would pay for a ticket. Yeah, yeah. To come to any show, to come to anything. So please support us. Vent is on there. You understand? Ale is on there. There's a couple of songs like um, Melodies, like New Day, Ogyal. There's so many different things. And the, the, the latest one that we had was I Pray. I you pray. understand? Yeah. Is on there as well. Um, and this is our interpretation of what these songs mean to us in our way, our yeah. vibe, our style. Yeah. So yeah. we really want you to, to come check it out and let us know what you feel. Send me the feedback and we would love your support on that and just let everybody know and blast it. You can listen to it morning, night, <laughs> afternoon, you know, dinner, after you finish up sex. You can do anything you want to do, I'm just saying. <laughs> with that note, with that yeah. note, listen, yeah. <laughs> listen, yeah. Um, listen, Tennyson Johnson. I appreciate yes, your time tonight. I know everybody joining us in and out. Appreciate your time tonight and your your perspective on soca on music. 
And that is why a title tonight, this, con this, this conversation, you're more than just a soccer artist. I think you've proven that. DJ Adam actually said you could be a comedian as well, too. So that probably oh. will be at some point in time. But yo, I really appreciate your time tonight. We definitely will be looking out for the, for the, for the music coming. And, yes. you know, all the, all the best within, within, within the next couple of months going forward. And as, as usual, you know, you have my support. So once anything really, that, 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 is, a, that is a given already. I just, I just want to let everybody know my last words is just support, just support. What if you support soca music, support the bodies of work, support what everybody does, because it's it's a lot to take it to put out right now. Correct, if, if, especially if at this time. To, if if we decide to still put out music and put out music right now, and people want to hear music, we want to hear music. But the truth is, it's costly to do. Yeah, you know it's costly to do, but we do it because we love it. So we want people to really go out and support. We want people to stream. We want people to buy the albums. We want people to buy the songs. Yeah. So if we support every single soccer artist right now, if they decide to put out a body of work, everybody's supposed to be able to support that. So yeah. again, I thank you again for having me. Yes, and ma'am. You'll have a copy of of Caribbean Moscato. Ah, uh, very soon. <laughs> yeah. All right, my brother. We'll pick up very soon, all right? Woo. Step into the spotlight. Woo.